Fox back for another story. This one is called The Man from Ironbark. Again, a Banjo Patterson poem from 1892. And another one of my favorites. I guess most of Banjo Patterson's stuff is, is a favorite of mine. But anyway, so let's jump into this and see, see how well we can, we can do it. Um, it's called The Man from Ironbark, and it's about a guy from back in a rural area that comes to Sydney and he doesn't know what to do so he decides to get his uh, beard shaved off and uh, let's let's hear about what happens when when that ensues so here we go the man from iron bark by banjo patterson it was the man from iron bark who struck the sydney town he wandered over street and park he wandered up and down he loitered here he loitered there till he was like to drop until at last, in sheer despair, he saw a barber's shop. Ere yeah, I'll have me beard and whiskers off. I'll be a man of mark. I'll go and do the Sydney toff up home in Ironbark. The barber man was small and flash, as barbers mostly are. He wore a strike-your-fancy sash. He smoked a huge cigar. He was a humorist of note and keen at repartee. He laid the odds and kept a tote, whatever that may be. And when he saw our friend arrive, he whispered, Here's a lark. Just watch me catch him all alive, this man from Iron Bark. There was some gilded youths that sat along the barber's wall. Their eyes were dull, their heads were flat. They had no brains at all. To them the barber passed the wink, his dexter eyelid shut. I'll make this bloomin' yokel think his bloomin' throat is cut. And as he soaked and rubbed it in, he made a rude remark. I suppose them flats is pretty green up there in Ironbark. A grunt was all reply he got. He shaved the bushman's chin, then made the water boiling hot and dipped the razor in. He raised his hand, his brow grew black. He paused a while to gloat and then slashed the red hot razor back across his victim's throat. Upon the newly shaven skin, it left a livid mark. No doubt it fairly took him in, the man from Iron Bark. He fetched a wild up country yell might wake the dead to hear. And though his throat he knew full well was cut from ear to ear, he struggled gamely to his feet and faced the murderous foe. You've done for me, you dog. I'm beat. One hit before I go. I only wish I had a knife, you blessed murdering shark. But you'll remember me all your life, the man from Iron Bark. He lifted up his pear, hairy paw with one tremendous clout. He landed on the barber's jaw and knocked the barber out. He set to work, work with tooth and nail. He made the place a wreck. He grabbed the nearest gilded youth and tried to break his neck. And all the while his throat he held to save his vital spark. And murder, bloody murder, yelled the man from Iron Bark. A peeler man who heard the din came in to see the show. He tried to run the bushman in, but he refused to go. And when at last the barber spoke and said, "'Twas all in fun. "'Twas just a little harmless joke, a trifle overdone." "'A joke!' he cried. "'By George, that's fine! "'A lively sort of lark. "'I'd like to catch that murdering swine some night in Ironbark.'" And now, while round the shearing floor, the listening shearers gape, he tells the story o'er and o'er and brags of his escape. Then barber chaps what keeps a tote by George I've had enough. One tried to cut me bloomin' throat, but thank the Lord it's tough. And whether he's believed or no, there's one thing to remark, that flowing beards are all the go way up in Ironbark. One of my favourites, and you can see why, The Man from Ironbark by Banjo Patterson from 1892. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thank you.